ओम पूर्णमद पूर्णमद पूर्णा पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्ण से पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओं शाति 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 ओ ब्रह्मानंद परम सुखद केवल ज्ञानमूर्ति द्वंद्वातीत गगन सदृश तत्व सियादिलक्ष्यम एक विमलमचल सर्वधी साक्षिभूत भावातीत त्रिगुणरहित सद्गु तम नमा ओ एडोरेशन सद्गुरु इज ब्रह्मन द गिवर ऑफ सुप्रीम ब्लिस एम्बॉडिमेंट ऑफ प्योर कॉन्शियसनेस वन विदाउट ए सेकेंड वास्ट एज ईथर इन्फिनिट eternal beyond the three gunas and their modifications the supreme precept yog vashishtha in sthiti prakarana section 45 profound insight into the highest the absolute truth and the absolute truth is very simple truth alone exists satyam eva jayate nanritam truth alone triumphs untruth like banana also layers and layers of illusion ko har peeli de bana la step we end up with nothing now the basic points are being brought to you basic points the how should an aspirant live his life do his sadhana with the help of a spiritual preceptor first point have a spiritual preceptor someone who can guide you every form of knowledge you want to gain you have to have a skilled person behind it you want to be a musician you don't be practice music just by looking into google <laughs> find an expert musician then go under their guidance is most important to have the right source something may appear very ideal but the source that is coming the source is not ideal you have to figure that out <laughs> then you should not follow that type of you will be drawn into that type of env- environment so with the help of a spiritual preceptor study of scriptures that's important swadhyaya the word swadhyaya is you study this your own self chapter by chapter who am i and that's a vast study because this is the basis of your i am all the world universe is recognized universe itself doesn't say here am i here am i the mountain here am the sun <laughs> to they are all experienced through soul operating through the mind
what I'm leading you to understand. The whole world before you is a basis for a study. The world, substantiality in the world is not anything other than the self. So therefore, your study should not be intellectual attainment. That's another aspect. Intellectual study is needed for your practical life. But here we are not focused on that stage. Profound stage is allow yourself to be enriched by spiritual knowledge, nourished by knowledge. By knowledge we imply teachings that emanate from Vedas, Upanishads, all Hindu scriptures, Puranas, all those teachings, if you delve deep into them under guidance, what you are doing, you are figuring out who am I. All that is helping you to understand the I am, what is the source within you. Body is not the source of your experience. Nerves are not the source of your experience. Brain, yes, it's a medium, but not ultimate source. What sources your brain itself? And going to further understanding, all experiences are possible by your senses. But senses themselves can't complete the experience. Mind is needed. Mind, on the other hand, cannot come to a conviction unless intellect helps. Intellect itself cannot give you ultimate until intellect becomes intuitional and draws from what is behind the intellect which is a cosmic source. So your study should allow you to gain all this insight. Raja Yoga have explained, Japa Swadhyaya Ishwar Pranidhanani Japa reciting divine name that allows your mind to turn God words. And I'm not going to in, in that detail at this stage. But all that comes under Swadhyaya. Japa, surrender to God, and study of scriptures. Your Swadhyaya becomes successful when you ascertain the fact that the world is unreal. Therefore, do not allow your mind to be just fascinated by a worldly visualization that this is how I should be to be happy. Because nowhere in the world you can find that perfect ideal. You can become very healthy. You can have a big property and possession. You can go viral. <laughs> you can be adored and applauded by countless people. But should it be the goal of 
of any individual. That's that's the goal. If you are childish, then of course this is the best thing you can get. <laughs> but you don't want to stay childish, you want to be wise, then wise up. <laughs> When you live your life, allow a subtle mystic effort to enter your movement. It's called yoga has to enter in your movement. Paving the way to a profounder revelation of I am. Who am I? I am that am I. Aham Brahmas. Your aham has gone into mayhem. <laughs> Not in my abbey. <laughs> I'm joking. Then having the discovered the unreality of the world, he should not allow himself to be agitated by the loss of wealth or even by the death of dear relatives. And having discovered the self, he ends all forms of grief. You need to understand in a profound way. As unreality of the world is discovered, it is a, it's not a discovery at your intellectual level. It's a discovery at the level of your intuitive awareness. Intuitive awareness again doesn't come all at once. If your conscience becomes very clear, if a heart begins to clear up, a deep-rooted understanding becomes very simple to know that you are something that cannot be taken away by time. Time will come and go. All things but the I am, that remains untouched. That type of understanding, just like when you go to sleep, all things that are so important for your mind completely move away. And you are in no way missing them. Rather, you are refreshed in sleep. You refreshed with the fact that nothing was there. To draw from this the lesson. If you could understand nothing is there, not by sleeping, but by waking up. <laughs> Through profound understanding, you will have the highest revelation. You will have a you will be attaining the goal that's called Paramdham, supreme goal. A sense of increasing unreality of the world begins to enter your life if your sadhana is sustained day by day under good guidance. That's what we call vairagya, dispassion. And the symptoms that develop in your daily life, the symptoms are you challenges everyone has to face. Is the time for contagious diseases like sneezing? <laughs> Anybody can get it. 
and life will present ups and downs in so many stages. People live in their problems, you have family, you have family problems, you have the body, you have body problems. <laughs> but while all this goes on, how are you handling and end up with what? In other words, as you do your sadhana, there is always a room open within yourself to move away from all problems and turn to God. That ability is creating a channel. And that channel goes on opening more and more, which endows you with patience endurance, not to be discouraged, not to enter into despair, nil despairandum. <laughs> so, if that is, that is what we mean by Discovering the unreality of the world. Discovering the unreality of the world is not one minute job. Oh, from tomorrow the world is not exist. I am Brahman. <laughs> no, you are discovering the unreality by facing challenges with patience. Because deep down there is a little whisper. This is not a reality. Wait. And the more you go in, in that process, you are becoming increasingly aware that the world is not there to trap you. The world is there only to help you to get out of illusions. All that is given to you is a basis for your enlightenment. And the final stage, in brief, there will be no grief. <laughs> that again is a, is a profounder stage. If you live with your mind, mind will show grief. But behind the mind your, is your heart, the deeper level. That level will not be touched. People get into confusion. <laughs> You'll see great sages. At the time of death there is certain utterance of suffering. Even Jesus says, Oh God, have you forsaken me? Father, That experience of pain and sorrow, because this is a reality being expressed through your brain and nervous system, that expression does not mean the true expression of what you are. Figure that out. <laughs> so, the idea is not to become a stone-like personality, unshaken by everything. But be flexible, be shaken, and, and yet not shaken at all. Put it in a simple, another way to understand. A healthy tree is that which allows itself to be shaken by the wind. As it shakes, nourishment goes right deep into its root. It becomes strengthened at the root level. The more strength at the root level, greater is the possibility of flex shaking flexibility. 
shaking flexibility allows a sage to be in communion with masses. Otherwise, the sage became like a mountain. It's all right, people will come and have darshan, <laughs> but nothing can you gain out. But in, in brief, because that aspect of sages' personality communes with the masses and their sufferings and appears to be even shaken by all that. And that allows the people to draw teachings. This ocean of the world process surges with the waters of vasanas. Uh, you have to always understand that all your experiences in this world are backed up by your vasanas, subtle desires of your mind. Subtle desires mean subtle impressions. Every, every moment you are inter interacting with objects of the world or people of the world, but in that interaction, what is highlighted? Your vasana. Subtle impression. near and dear ones, who are near and dear, depends upon your vasana. Even your relatives, very close, practically near and dear ones, are not always near and dear. <laughs> you become offended by them. <laughs> so, what makes people near, <laughs> not the space, your vasana. <coughs> And that applies to all objects of the world. Led by vasana, certain objects are very dear to you, certain objects are nasty, you have to throw them away. Certain objects are confused, in the morning you want them, by the evening you don't want them. <laughs> <laughs> So, the whole world is a play of vasanas. It's the ocean of vasana, you are diving up and down, up and down. While many continue to drown in this ocean, those who enter into the boat of pragya cross it and attain the mortal abode of the self. Pragya is intuitional knowledge. The revelation, I am Brahman. With that revelation, the enlightened soul is not drowned by the vasanas, drowned into vasanas. Vasanas continue like clouds continue in the sky. The sky doesn't get drowned in the clouds. And we remedy the drowning process. <laughs> Sharpen your intellect by the practice of vivek, vairagya, titiksha. Few things have been mentioned by Yoga Vashishtha, but let me give you a complete picture. The picture is about
अधिकारित्वा हु इज क्वालिफाइड फॉर अटेनिंग स्पिरिचुअल नॉलेज एंड फॉर दैट स्क्रिप्चर्स हैव हाईलाइटेड विवेक फर्स्ट पॉइंट इंक्रीजिंग सटल अंडरस्टैंडिंग that i am not the body not the mind not the intellect objects of the world are not really giving me happiness any setting in the world that will seem so pleasant is only a passing situation so that vivek movement but all this is not a matter of of a pathetic nature vivek implies all this leading to the highest joy a joyous revelation when you speak of world and its shallowness it gives a sense of pathos <coughs> despair so all this is not there where are we going dead in the desert <laughs> no <clears throat> all this is not there <clears throat> you are waking up from a miserable dream to a joyous awakening so we wake vairagya dispassion <coughs> third one is a set of six virtues shama serenity <coughs> dhamma control of mind and senses uparati allowing your rati the sense of delight to shift from just pleasure eat drink be merry from that state to a purposeful experience coming closer and closer to god rati that is moving your delight moving to higher and higher grades super rati so much so that you were not interested in going to heaven and then coming back and doing the same thing again and again next one is called titiksha <coughs> titiksha means and developing endurance people do endure but while enduring they become extremely pessimistic so that endurance is not titiksha <clears throat> all these qualities have to be developed with great patience <clears throat> today you may have may have more titiksha tomorrow you may lose it <laughs> but once you have experienced it it bugs your mind <laughs> good bug next quality is shraddha <coughs> you have developed <coughs> internal confidence faith and it is sattvic it becomes extremely unshaken and finally samadhan do not spend all your energy criticizing the adversities of your life but put yourself through self effort with the understanding that god has given you all the resources and the best news he is with you <laughs> and he is guiding you remember the gita 
उपद्रष्टानुमंता च भर्ता भोक्ता महेश्वर गॉड इज ऑब्जर्विंग यू टू कम टू दैट लेवल रिक्वायर्स योर गुड कर्मास एवरी बॉडी डू नॉट हैव दैट स्टेज मासेज डोंट हैव दैट स्टेज of understanding that god is behind as you purify yourself among countless souls working those who have developed certain good karmas and some good association they come to this stage that god is watching over the second stage anumanta when you do something negative someone gives you a bag on your head <laughs> your own conscience hits you that's god is now coming more closer to your your life and some and when you are trying to do something good this something comes from behind patting you praising you encouraging you that call anumanta that type of feeling enters your personality next bharta you begin to realize that you don't have to worry all about how things are going to be <laughs> having seen few here stern gray <laughs> now is that <start> worry <laughs> what will happen 5 years later <laughs> keep imagining all types of tragedy and turmoil no develop understanding that you have a bhartha you have a bhartar <laughs> we have some beloved one who worries about you more than you worry about yourself but his worry is not worry his worry is a, like doctor's attitude to a patient if doctor worries about the patient and he himself needs to go to a hospital <laughs> and then you come to a stage <laughs> that you are not living your life for enjoyment your ego begins to fade away self effacement then who has been the enjoyer in your personality god bhokta and now opens up to your revelation that enjoyer within you is god himself god who is abs- in who is brahman the absolute paramatma all this is given in the gita these stages upadrashtanumanta cha bharta bhokta maheshwara all these stages come in your life as a result of your qualifications coming back again to the vedantic category <laughs> you have vivek vairagya shat sampat six virtues which i have explained and finally aspiration burning aspiration for god realization burning aspiration all these words come they don't mean to keep you in a state of agitation <laughs> burning doesn't mean real burning <laughs> it is a cool attraction towards divine 
egg wants to hatch out of it. So it's a burning aspiration. The swan wants to fly up over the rainbow. It's a burning aspiration. The sun wants to rise, show up through the by removing the clouds, the burning aspiration. Burning aspiration is not real, not a tragic development. <laughs> it's a powerful urge, just like people who are skilled in a sport and mountain climbing, then each time they see a bigger mountain, now they become very more happier. <laughs> they can show up their strength better. <laughs> so that type of aspiration, the bigger. So these are qualifications. Called adhikaritva. And then sadhana is shavana chatushtaya, what you practice, shavana, listening. But listening again is your whole life job, your two ears are always hungry. You would not give, not given <laughs> joyous words to listen to, <laughs> you go into all types of politics. And <laughs> worldly news. <laughs> A lot of junk enters to the ear channels. <laughs> and even when things are normal, seems to be cultured, still listening art has to develop. Many things go out of your touch, out of your sight. Wonderful situations come, but you do not have any, you have not listened in a profound way. So listening, simple definition of listening is you, <laughs> you allow your mind to pick up the pearls of wisdom. <laughs> as you study the scriptures <coughs> and next stage manana. Manana is like chewing the cud. <coughs> what you have picked up, you reflect upon it. Shavana removes Sanshaya bhavana, doubts. You have so much doubt and diffidence and misunderstanding and distorted notion about yourself, about your goal, about the world. And these notions swarm over your emotions. But when you allow a deep interest into listening to what is the reality, not the views of people, but what is the heart-based reality, and again to understand all the scriptures are lined up to promote that. So listening removes sanshaya bhavana, doubting state of mind. And just to remind you that it's not something that your mind becomes free of doubt forever. <laughs> no, that again is always a progressive movement. Greater the purity, greater, greater is your state of conviction. 
and your conviction is not complete until so many so until complete integration occurs. But while you are integrating, you find yourself more and more secure even in even while mind is buzzing over you with creating doubts, diffidence. Try to understand in a proper way. The idea is that even though the mind has its own imaginations, etc., a deeper level of your mind stays calm. You have no doubt in your deeper level about the result of things, about sadhana and its result, the goal. Next one is called asambhavana. Asambhavana means feeling of, of diffidence. That all right, whatever scripture says is wonderful. Everything I understand it. But I understand myself more than what they are saying. <laughs> I'm not ready for liberation, but maybe two or three more. <laughs> so so always a diffidence about your potentiality. That diffidence moves away as you do manana. Having listened to, you have picked up pearls. Now you are utilizing the pearls in a more profounder way. And as you are digesting what you have listened to, then you realize it's not a question of time. It's a question of understanding. It's not the time that makes you grow up. Your understanding that makes you outgrow everything. So nothing is impossible. The last one called Viparita Bhavana. Viparit, mind has developed a, a kind of a distorted notion. Simple illustration is when you are seeing your face in a mirror and someone asks you, what are you doing? What are you seeing? And of course you say the truth, I'm seeing the, my face. But not exactly the truth, you are looking into the mirror. But somehow your face becomes more important than the mirror. <laughs> and the face that you see in the mirror may not be exactly your face. Is a reflection. <laughs> Understanding this point corrects viparita bhavana. Viparita bhavana is that subtle, subtle confusion between Awareness that is bringing out all these experiences of, of your mind, of your sentiments, of your practical reality, all these are in the realm of awareness. But the very awareness is like the mirror. That mirror you are forgetting, but you are involved with all these reflections. What is behind 
your worries, your anxieties, your expectations, your joyous condition, your all types of mental process goes on. But what is the underlying fact? Fact underlying fact is awareness. That awareness remains like a like ocean. All that you are experiencing are waves, reflections in that awareness. And somehow in your search, that pure awareness skips your notice. That pure awareness is God, is Brahman, is Satchidananda, ever-present reality. So that's what that's removed by Nididhyasan. Shavana, Manana, Nididhyasan. Nididhyasan is a Vedantic way of talking about Samadhi. Your mind moves away from worldly realities, mind that what called Vishayakara Vritti. Mind that is going after objects of the world goes into a modification. Those modifications of the mind subside. And you allow your mind to understand, I am Brahman. Just like we're looking at the ocean. First stage we're looking at all the waves and sometimes we are interested in a wave and go on looking at where it is going. This is called Vishaya Karavritti. <coughs> your, your mind is going after waves and that I have endless extension. And next, Brahma Karavritti. Your mind is looking at the ocean. Oh, how wonderful the ocean. Ocean automatically implied all the waves and goes far beyond the waves. So your awareness has always that type of possibility. Awareness at the ocean stage. Awareness undistracted. Then awareness through your mind and mind with vasanas and so forth, awareness gets into so many refractions. Your birth, life of birth and death, all that is in the realm of refraction. Sun is there, but all the illuminations that you find, they are refractions of the light of the sun. Do not follow the conduct of the ignorant, but follow the exemplary conduct of sages. Another point. That's highlighted in Hindu culture. Firstly, you must take Charanaraj, dust of the feet. It is not the dust of the feet, what it implies. <laughs> Follow the footsteps of those who are advanced. But ritualistically, you start with the feet. No harm in that. Gives you <laughs> reflexology. Now, if you follow the examples of sages, exercising any conduct, Sanskrit word is acharan, achar. You follow saintly personalities, 
ko sadachar your conduct is authenticated by sagely illust saintly illustrations you are following the conduct of leading to truth sat achar your achar is associated with vyavahar vyavahar means how do you live your practical life how do you deal with people around you friends dear ones etc in your interactions how what is your style and while all this goes on sad vichar your mind goes on developing profounder understanding sadachar sad vyavahar sad vichar <clears throat> people in this world become proud of their learning their learning austerity valor skill birth in a respectable family fame prosperity and virtuous qualities see you how human mind can be <laughs> obsessed and ego can become inflated what seems like positive if you have accomplished lot of academic success if you have fasted for so many days and didn't waver and observed all the ekadashis of a whole year <laughs> then you write notes inform all people how you have done <laughs> anyone who doesn't agree you can agree with them <laughs> try to understand the illusion all the good thing you do is good but your goodness should not end up inflating your ego it should end up thinning out your ego depriving the ego of all its calories <laughs> of joke <laughs> to end up in surrender to god what are the, all these things are mentioned by in yoga vashistha learning austerity valor skill birth in a respectable family fame prosperity and virtuous qualities <laughs> so people are proud of these but a sage seeing the illusionness of all this neither covets them nor becomes proud because of them so figure that out now we'll continue for conclude at this stage om triambakam yajamahe sugandhim pushti vardhanam urvarukum bandhanan मृत्योर मुक्षीयृता ओं सर्वे भवंतु सुखि सर्वे सन्तु निरामया सर्वे भद्रा पश्यंत मा कष्टुदुखभा भवे ओं शाति शाति शा